Hello, cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. We are so happy you have joined us. If you're not already a subscriber to our channel, could I ask that you just click that subscribe button below me and then just move over and click the bell and select how often you'd like to be notified of new videos on our channel. Doing this only takes a second, doesn't cost you anything. And make sure you know what's happening all the time. Now, today's video is all about my very favorite way to keep our food budget down. And it works too. Now, a bonus is I get lots of exercise and that is absolutely free. Right now, growing what we eat just makes sense. If you're in Victoria or New South Wales or South Australia or Tasmania or Southern Queensland, you are facing the highest produce prices ever in the coming months for a whole bunch of reasons. And you know what? If you live anywhere else, you'll cop them too because, hey, no one wants you to miss out on inflation. <laughs> Why should we have it, not you? Now, the last week here has decimated Victoria's food bowl. I saw whole orchards underwater, two vineyards where the vines had been pushed over by the force of the water. Paddocks, hundreds of them, that they were just underwater. Um, and all this right on harvest time. That $11 lettuce of a couple of months ago could well be back very, very soon. So being proactive and growing what we eat just makes sense. It will save you money. It will ensure that you eat fresh vegetables and fruits and berries. It will keep food on your table. I know I harp on about this, but honestly, growing at least some of what you eat is just sensible. It really is. And you don't need any special skills to grow food. I grow as much as I can of the food we eat. I don't grow a lot of um, things like potatoes or onions or carrots. They are all quite slow growing and they take up a lot of garden space. And they're pretty much the staples of our vegetable diet. I grow some each year, mainly because homegrown is so much better. But they are the three vegetables I buy routinely, especially if I can get them on a really good sale and preserve them. Most other veggies that we eat are grown in my very small backyard garden. Now it's a lot of garden in a very small backyard. <laughs> Last summer I grew tomatoes, capsicum, eggplant, cucumbers, Bush beans, zucchini, sweet basil, parsley, mint, ro excuse me, I've got the hiccups, rosemary, lettuce, pumpkins, raspberries, strawberries, apples, oranges, lemons, limes, um, mandarins, one little tiny peach off the peach tree. Over winter, the garden gave us cabbages, cauliflower, wombok, turnips, parsnips, peas, silver beet and lettuce. You know, lettuce grows all year round here. Even in winter, it will grow. It does slow down, but that's okay because we don't eat as much in winter. So I still plant it. Now, I've just planted tomatoes, lettuce, broccoli, cabbage, um, cauliflower, zucchini, bok choy, silver beet, spring onions, sugar snap peas, green feast peas, 
uh, capsicum, eggplant, cucumbers. Did I say zucchini? Zucchini, something else. Oh, bush beans. As I said, this is my very favourite way to keep our food budget down. I very, very rarely stop in the produce section of any supermarket. It would have to be a jolly good special for me to stop there and actually pick something up and put it in my trolley and pay for it. So growing all this food not only keeps the grocery bill down, but it actually doesn't take all that long. Now I spend less than two hours a week pottering in the garden and that is spread over the entire week, the entire seven days. You know, it only takes a few minutes a day to water, pull a weed or two as they appear and trust me when I say that is so much easier to do this than divide a whole day to weeding. When you see a weed, pull it. Um, planting new seeds or seedlings doesn't take very long. Harvesting the fruits of my labours does not take very long and it is so nice to be able to trot out the back door, run over to the garden and pick a zucchini and an eggplant and a tomato and have dinner. Growing your own food isn't hard. It isn't time consuming. It isn't costly. It is, however, fun. It does provide fresh food for your table. It does save you money. It does give you a greater variety in your diet. And it gives you a good workout for the grand sum of nothing. Now, a while back, I had a Cheapskates Club member complain to me that it cost more to grow veggies than buy them. And I was lying when I said it didn't. I don't lie. Now, after asking her a few questions, I know why she would think that. And I explained to her why she would think that. For starters, she spent an absolute fortune on very expensive, very fashionable raised garden beds. Oh, they look superb. They look divine. They were costly. Then she bought the soil to fill those garden beds. Then she paid someone to put in an irrigation system. Then she bought all the seedlings. People, you do not need to spend $1,000 to grow food. Now, I've covered this before, and you all know you can grow in the ground or in raised beds or in boxes or even in bags. You can grow in pots and hanging baskets, in ice cream containers, wheelbarrows and old gum boots. You can grow a plant in any container that will hold soil and drain water. It does not have to be fancy. It does not have to be pretty. It does not have to be made out of expensive, anodized, uh, what is it, colour bond metal or anything. It just needs to hold soil and drain water. So please, please don't think you need to spend $1,000 on setting up your garden because you don't. Just pick a nice sunny spot, turn over the soil Get rid of the grass. Yes, you will need to actually put on a pair of gloves and pull that grass out because you do not want it growing in amongst your plants. Sow some seeds and then look after that patch. Feed it regularly with worm tea or compost tea or seaweed solution. Water it regularly. Squash any bugs you find and you will be rewarded with food that you grew that you can eat because you know it is safe to eat and that hasn't cost you $11 for a lettuce or $8 for broccoli. With the rising costs of fruits and vegetables, paying $2 for a packet of seeds and growing your own just makes sense. Interest rates are rising and utility costs are rising, fuel costs are rising wages aren't rising. We all need to watch what we spend because another thing that isn't rising is our grocery budget. We have the same amount of money to buy the same amount of products but at a greatly inflated price. 
So even a little change, like growing just the salad veg that we eat, the lettuce, the um, cucumber, the tomatoes, the silver beet, will leave money in your grocery budget to help cover those inflated prices. Every little bit counts. Every little change matters. Just try it. Before I go, thank you so much for watching all the way through and subscribing. Feel free to leave a comment. I read every comment and I do my best to answer any questions you might have. If you do have a question, if you want to put it in the comments, all capitals so it stands out for me, just makes it easier for me to find it. And if you know someone who might like this video or who might like any of the other videos on our channel, please click that share button and send them the link. These three simple things, like, subscribe and share, help our channel to grow and be recognised more easily. And the more easy it is to find us, the easier it is for us to spread the message that it is perfectly okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing and that it is absolutely possible even in today's crazy world. I'll be back very soon with another video to save you money, time and energy. Happy cheapskating, everyone.